Egyptians celebrate the first democratically elected president in the very square where 18 months ago they began a revolution that swept away former leader Hosni Mubarak. Victory for the Muslim Brotherhood candidate Mohamed Morsi marked a new phase in the country's transformation. He takes office after a week of concern that the country's powerful military leadership might not have accepted the voters' choice. The stock market rallied after Mr Morsi was declared the winner, illustrating the relief felt from a political resolution. However, some unease remains, within Egypt from liberals mistrustful of the Brotherhood and outside of the country, notably from the United States and Israel, to key relationships. Egypt has elected a new president. Israel appreciates the Egyptian democratic process and respects its results. We expect to work together with the new administration on the basis of our peace treaty. I believe that peace is a vital interest for both countries and I believe that peace is the foundation of stability in our region. For their part, Israelis are well aware of widespread public hostility towards them in Egypt, something the Muslim Brotherhood is perceived as having capitalized on in the past. The Israelis probably reckon that for now they don't face immediate trouble. Uh, the kind of things they'd be worried about would say much closer ties between the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas in the Gaza Strip, who ideologically are kind of part of the same movement. I think their calculation is that, however, that the economic troubles in Egypt are so uh, pronounced that the Muslim Brotherhood will probably concentrate on that for the moment and probably also under pressure from the United States not stir up trouble with Israel. But I think over the long term the Israelis are pretty concerned. Palestinians, however, have already voiced hopes that their cause will be promoted by an Egyptian president rooted in the Muslim Brotherhood. We will look to Egypt to play a big leading role an historic role regarding the Palestinian cause and helping the Palestinian nation get freedom, return home and totally end the Gaza siege. I hope for Egypt to be united. It's unclear how much room for policy shifts Egypt's new president will have. I think Mr Morsi will have to test his room to maneuver. Um, his, he's got some powers, but very important authority has been uh, stripped from him. So on the one hand, he can name a government, he can choose a, a prime minister, um, but on the other hand, he can't do anything that has to do, for instance, with reforming security forces, the judiciary, so very crucial um, issues. What is more, the generals have a keen interest in protecting the $1.3 billion in aid expected from the U.S. this year. Obviously, the Muslim Brotherhood has a very different um, understanding and view of uh, Egypt's relations with the outside world when you compare it to uh, the Mubarak regime. Um, so there is a lot of concern in Israel. There's a bit less concern in the U.S. But this is this is the beginning of a new relationship, and they're going to have to start learning um, to adapt to each other. Achieving a new, deeper international understanding will be more difficult as Egypt works out internal power plays. We don't really know how pragmatic or otherwise the Muslim Brotherhood will be in power. What will the military do? Is the military prepared to let the Muslim Brotherhood govern or are they really planning to kind of scotch them and frustrate them? And finally, there's the regional picture because this is a region that's still in turmoil. Egypt, as a major player in the Arab world, will have to react to what's going on in Syria. Libya is far from stable. And there's the possibility of an Israeli attack on Iran, which would again throw the whole situation up in the air. The question of who Egypt's new president will be may have been resolved this weekend but the scope and authority of the office is still in question. Likewise, the role the new Egypt will play on the international stage will be ambiguous until the struggle between its military, political and civil institutions is settled. Veronica Kandapar, Financial Times.